Hi guys, I'm Sabrina from The Power Within and we're here today with a very special guest, Marco, uh, who we are just about to start interviewing and find out a bit about um, his line of work and his journey. So thank you so much, Marco, okay, for thanks, being Sabrina. here today. Marco, yes, if you could please tell us about yourself and what line of work you do, what you work with, and you know a little bit about your journey as well. How how did you start? Okay. Um, well, it's difficult for me to define myself, so I would have to say what other people call me, which is okay. like you know more of a mystic, uh, working in the mystical arts. Okay. Uh, whether that be clairvoyant and, and psychic and energy work. Mm. Um, I started many years ago with this in the music business um, where I was employed by companies to uh, find bands and artists that were going to happen. And for that you need a very strong intuition, a very strong gut reaction. And um, you know, I, had, I had major successes in those areas. And I stayed in that business for about 17 years. And as the business became more materialized, as it became more, I would say, corporate, more globalized, I felt people like me were getting more and more marginalised because the music industry was moving more towards analytics, which mm. was deciding the the records were more made by the statistics. So people like us that had intuition, what we would call the mavericks, the oh. um, the uh, the weird ones, um, <laughs> were kind of marginalised out. And uh, so 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 by default, I then found myself working on one to one basis. With people, and I ended up at this shop in Covent Garden, psychic shop called Mysteries. Oh, okay. Okay, working for my friend there, Matthew Geffen, um, and I spent I've spent twelve years there, and it was very very successful for me. And uh, I travelled around Hong Kong and uh, all of Southeast Asia and working there, and uh, that was also very successful for me as well, working with people and yeah, good, yeah. Mm. So that's really what I would say my line of work is. Yeah. Like more, more like of um, psychic intuition and working with uh, those kind of energies. Yeah, and also, you know, not, it's, it's surprising the amount of work people that you meet and the people that you work with. I mean, I, you know, working for, you know, very, very powerful business people, and bankers and artists and, you know, a lot. They would never really go around advertising that they work with people like me. Mm. And they keep it to themselves, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I okay. bet. <laughs> no, they do, right? Because, you know, unfortunately in this world, they'd be deemed as weird. I yeah. went to see the psychic. And it is more of a female business. Mm. So the, the, the people I've worked with, I would say, were 90% women, and most of them are very, very powerful. Oh, wow. Women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and women get it because you know, they say that, you know, women are eight times more intuitive than men anyway. So when you're working with women, you're working with very strong women that I like to work with. Um, you know, it's uh, there's a really good connection. Okay. Mm? Okay. Mm. Um, another question that we we all, always like to ask our interviewees it's about you know the God. Um, what is God? Do you believe in God? Yeah, hundred percent. I believe in God. Perfect. And what does you know, God a, mean to you? Atheists, uh, the, uh, all atheists believe in God at times of crisis. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, that makes right? sense. No, they do. They all atheists <laughs> call for God at the times of crisis. So, uh, you know, to not believe in God is just stupid. What does God mean to you then? God for me is the life force. It's the energy that, uh, and, and it's nature. And um, it's 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 God connected to religion for you. Do you are you a religious person or a spiritual person? Does that resonate? Well, so it was either. I mean, it's like as far as religion is concerned. I mean, I've uh, I've studied every religion. Um, going, I've gone deep into Sufism and Hinduism. I've gone deep into Buddhism. I've gone deep into Christianity and and the different sects around that as well. Um, I've looked at a lot of different things, and um, I think all of them have value. And they all started off as real beautiful spiritual mm. movements. It's just as they got organized, exactly. and money got involved, and um, materialism got involved, that they got dragged down to uh, to a more um, basic level, to a more, yeah, to a, to a, yeah, they got dragged down. They, 
basically. Okay. Well, a, a lot of people talk about spirituality, and a lot of people want to be spiritual. And it's, what does what does that mean? What does the spirituality means to you? Well, I mean, everybody has their own way of expressing it. Right? I mean, some people, it's like dancing around, you know, like to hug a tree or dance around the maple. I mean, I don't <laughs> judge anybody or anything. But uh, for me, uh, spirituality is just to become about integrated with yourself and knowing who you are and knowing who others are. Okay. And it's also about basic kindness to, to, to each other in this world. Okay. Well, another thing that we like to talk about is the ascension movement. Um, and there is something, some sort of like ascension in the earth's greed at the moment, so it's being elevated. Is that something you, you believe in? It's not something I believe in, I think it's something that's a fact. I mean, it's, it's, it's like when you look at what evolving is, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. Evol okay. Evolving is ascension. So it's, it's, I, I believe that the, I, have great, I have great hope, I have great faith for mankind. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I truly believe that uh, you know, in thousands of years to come, there will be a very different race. It won't be uh, tearing each other apart. And, but it has to go through this stage that it's going through right now. It's, um, as, the, as the Hindus call it, we're in the time of the Kali Yuga. And there's four, uh, there will be four um, stages of uh, the universe, energy stages. Oh. And the Kali Yuga is the worst possible stage. The so the one, one we're at now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. And we're not even, we've only just started. So it's about 400,000 <laughs> years long, we're only at 5,000, right? But, they, but, but luckily, what the Hindus say is that we, this is the best time to get to God, right? <laughs> Just, you know, it's much yeah. easier, right? It gets so heavy here. But this is the time when brother turns against brother and sister against sister, mm. father against son, and so on, father against son. This is the time of, of, this is the time of terrible things, oh, wow. okay? When materialism takes over the world. When we, when we move on from this, um, we move into the Sata Yuga, which is the light bodies. We live for thousands upon thousands of years in that stage. But it's more difficult at that stage to become realized. So this is the easiest time right now to become realized. The, the lifespan is so much shorter and, and it's intense. Mm. They say there's a great saying which says that when we leave this earth, the angels applaud us because they could have never have done it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's seen as a very brave act to come and take this on right, and do this work. Mm. Um, what about soul mission? Is that something you, you mm. something you, you, what, finding, you found, finding, finding, your, your, finding your, your, your purpose? Yeah, finding your purpose. I think, it, I think, it, I think it's, it comes in many different periods. I think you could have three or four or five different purposes in one life. Mm -hmm. And do you think is it something you know, or is it something people, people pretend they don't know, they're doing something they are busy with their lives and ignoring their soul mission and not connected with the, the true calling from the soul? Or is no. it just what they are doing? I think it's just what they're doing. Okay. I think it's like... I'm not sure whether sometimes... I, 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 I'm, still, I'm still between whether there is choice or no choice. Ah. Okay. That's an interesting mm. way of looking at it. Mm. Okay, great. Well, no choice is easier because it just means surrender. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But when we have no choice, we're happy. You know, it's like if I've got a choice of where do I go on holiday, Ibiza or Portugal. It's like I'm tossing and turning. But if I just know I'm going to Ibiza, I'm happy. <laughs> so it's like once I come into that choiceless state where there is no choice, things mm. become a lot happier. Things become a lot nicer. So I kind of believe in choicelessness. I kind of go with that. Mm. Okay. Okay. So what about um, meditation? Is that something you practice a lot? Is it important? Do you think that's important for one's spiritual development? I would say that meditation is the great, is the great panacea for all ills. Um, you know, we live in a world of stress. Mm. We live in a world of violence. If you, you know, I'm talking about in the majority um, and the system that it's work. It's all set up to make a person feel um, basically to enslave human beings. Oh. 
into death and into interfering into crisis. Um, the only way out of that is meditation. Um, what we find is that it, it operates on, on uh, three types of uh, brain waves, which is stress, which is known mm -hmm. as beta. Yeah. Um, then as we come down into meditation, it's alpha. And as we come deeper, it comes into theta. By reaching into these, or coming down and meditating into these deeper states, we're able to get away from the world, we're able to come out of the world, and into, into new ways of looking at things and how to handle things. The world leaves us. The negative world, the stressful world leaves us. Every now and again, yeah, it knocks on our door. And when it does, it's, uh, you know, we go deeper again. It's, mm -hmm. just a, it's just telling us to keep going deeper. Um, but yes, meditation is the most powerful thing that we can, we can do for ourselves. Beautiful. If people spend uh, like 10 minutes a day meditating, we would have a very different world. It's, uh, it's like it's scientifically proved that if you yeah. have one person meditating in a crime neighborhood, neighborhood that is, has a high crime rate that crime rate will go down really yeah. things will become more peaceful yeah hmm? no so word. it's 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 very 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 powerful very powerful hmm. indeed and all you need to do is 10 15 minutes a day maximum great and what kind of meditations do you do you work with? practice most of them but uh, i would say with alpha meditations working with alpha most powerful because it stays away from from um, anything that's associated with religion like a Buddhist meditation or Christian meditation mm -hmm. a Sufi meditation or Hindu meditation not that I have anything against these things I think they all have extreme great value mm -hmm. in, in the world but we prefer or should I say I prefer to stay away from uh, anything that's associated with religion in that way okay. otherwise it's no longer a meditation it becomes an And um, would you be able to give us a bit of uh, information on this alpha meditation? How does it work? Is it is it a quite you know uh, in depth me method or is it a quite simple method? How does it work? Um, <laughs> how do you know? How do you know you're meditating? You That's a really good you question. Don't, you don't know you're meditating. You just have to sit there, right? You have to sit there, count yourself down from three to one slowly okay okay uh, the best thing is to relax the body it's to always uh, visualize cr um, tranquil and passive scenes because so okay. you can come into the passivity and slowly come into meditation but do you know that you're in meditation sometimes you can be really stressed out in a meditation mm. a lot of stuff could be coming up and you can walk out of that meditation and say mm, and, and feel well nothing really happened okay. it was a, it was a well, I didn't meditate and you find that those things that you've looked at have changed. Cool. And in the day, the people that you have seen that have been giving you stress in meditation or the, or, the, or the issues that have come up have suddenly changed. So there's no right way or wrong way in which to meditate. Okay. So it, it, I, I always struggle with thinking, well, I used to. Um, I guess I, I, I've learned a bit from you, actually. But um, it's, it's not right or wrong, is it? When there's you're no meditating. right or wrong, no. You just, you just go with it. No, and it's this thing about life force. It's like, you know, you start off with one type of meditation, for example. This is this is also about not getting stuck on things, and it will lead you into other things. As you, you know, as you said earlier about doing Kundalini yoga and you know the different practices that you're in. You know, you, you start with one thing, and it will lead you to other mm. things. Yeah, it's all creative. Right. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This is um, our last question. Thank you so much, Marco. It was lovely to, to have you here. So I just wanted to ask you um, if you can share with us, obviously, what was the most amazing experience you ever had in terms of spirit spirituality? If you like to share with us, that would be great. Yeah, um, see, um, um, my greatest experience yeah, was uh, delivering my child. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been my greatest spiritual experience. Oh, no. Nice. Uh, yeah, I actually delivered my own child. So. How was that? So she was the first. She was the first one that um, that I saw. That she, no, I was the first one she saw. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, although she complains about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, that was uh, no, that was probably the greatest experience for me was my daughter being born. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being okay. here with us today. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's been a
pleasure. So thank you.